Hello and welcome to week 11 of USMLE Domination High Yield Tutorials. We have an exciting uh, presentation today, but before I begin, please subscribe to the channel, share this with all your friends and colleagues, let this free information go viral so everyone can ace the exam and place in the 99th percentile. So we're going to start here with a question like we always do a high yield question. This is a 54 year old male who presents with chest and flank pain with the following chest x-ray that's seen here. The pleural fluid that was aspirated reveals a pleural fluid protein to serum protein ratio of 0 0.3. Which of the following is a likely ideology of the pleural fluid? Is it lung cancer with abdominal mets, nephrotic syndrome, pneumonia, or trauma? And I promise we'll come back to this question at the very end after we've done our very brief tutorial. So what I want to do here is talk about the two major pleural diseases, a pleural effusion and pneumothorax. These are very high yield and the USM leaves and expect everyone to be able to diagnose this on a chest x-ray or a CT and everyone should be familiar with being able to identify this. So a pleural effusion is when you have excess fluid in the pleural space. And this is a problem because it restricts lung expansion during inspiration. Typically you'll have decreased breath sounds on the side of the effusion and it'll be dull to percussion on physical exam. If you take a look at this chest x-ray, we're we'll gonna start with the right lung, which is a more normal side. If you look at this, there's a nice acute sharp angle here at the costophrenic angle because there's no fluid here. This is normal when you see this nice acute sharp angle here between the lung and the diaphragm. On the other side, on the left, we have blunting of the costophrenic angle. We don't see that sharp uh, acute angle between the diaphragm and, uh, and, and, and the lung here because there's all this fluid here. There's a left pleural effusion here with um, which, which is with blunting of the costophrenic angle. On the CT, you have this kind of meniscus size or comma-shaped fluid that's kind of layering here, you know, dependently. This is a nice example of what a left pleural effusion would look like on a CT. Notice that's a little denser than the surrounding, excuse me, darker, darker or hypodense than surrounding visualized musculature here. So this is a nice example of what a left pleural effusion would look like. Now, for the USMLE, you want to be able to differentiate a transitative versus an exudative effusion, and they're different. So a transitative effusion is typically, you know, hypocellular, and it's clear when you look at it. It's usually due to increased hydrostatic pressure or decreased oncotic pressure from fluid overload or edematous states like congestive heart failure, sodium retention, cirrhosis, nephrotic syndrome. And the key is this criteria known as like criteria, which differentiates a transitative and an exudative effusion. So the pleural protein, the serum protein, will be less than 0 0.5 or the plural LDH to serum LDH ratio will be less than 0 0.6. That's in contrast to an exudative effusion where the plural protein to serum protein ratio will be greater than 0 0.5 and the plural LDH to serum LDH will be greater than 0 0.6. And this fluid is more cloudy because it's cellular. Uh, it's related to increased vascular permeability that allows fluid and plasma proteins to leave and go into the extracellular space. And this is caused not from fluid over those states but more malignancy, infection and trauma. Okay, we're going to move on to a pneumothorax. So in contrast to pleural effusion, which is a fluid in the pleural space, this is when air enters the pleural space. That's what a pneumothorax is. And this results in dyspnea, uneven chest expansion. You will also have decreased breath sounds on the side of the pneumothorax, but it'll be uh, hyper-resonant to percussion on physical exam. And this can be caused from a multitude of entities such as, you know, rupture of an apical bleb or cyst, and especially in a tall, thin male that's a smoker, uh, a lung disease as seen in emphysema, barotrauma from you know, high pressure ventilation or even blunt and penetrating trauma as we see in gunshot wounds and injury. And it's very easy to diagnose on an x-ray. If you take a look here, there's usually a sharp line that demarcates the normal lung. This is normal lung because you can see like vascularity in the bronchovascular bundle running through this lung. And then there's, then the, this area becomes extremely dark or hyperlucent. This is all air. So this is this interface here between the normal lung and air, this is the pneumothorax here. And you can see that there's a nice sharp demarcation between the lung and the pneumothorax. So it's very easy. We don't see that on this side. There's, you can see the vascularity of the bronchovascular bundle going all the way to the periphery of the lung here on the right side. Very easy to diagnose on the CT as well. So on the more normal side, on the right side, you can see you know, the bronchovascular bundle here. Um, there is a little bit of emphysema with these dark holes, but on the left side, we see lung parenchyma, but we see these, you know, really dark hyperlucent or hypodense air foci, this triangular area of air, this triangular area of dark air, this small focus here at the apex of air. This is a pneumothorax, very easy to identify on a CT and a chest X-ray. No one should have any problem identifying a pneumothorax or a pleural effusion. Now attention pneumothorax is a surgical emergency. It's when air enters a pleural space, but it can't leave. So one way to identify that on a chest X-ray is the trachea will deviate away from 
the affected lung where the pneumothorax is. And we have to treat this emergently with needle decompression and chest tube placement. And what it looks like is there's a large pneumothorax here on the right side. This is the aerated lung right here. It's very small. It's been completely collapsed. We see that line that we talked about earlier and all this loosened area is all air. But notice that the trachea, which is right here, has been shifted to the left. It should be more midline. It should be kind of like right here, but it's been shifted to the left because there's this attention pneumothorax, a surgical emergency, which needs needle decompression and chest tube placement. So in summary, again, a pleural effusion is just when you have fluid in the pleural space, typically seen in fluid overload states, malignancy, infection, trauma. You always want to use like criteria to differentiate a transitative versus an exudative effusion, as we talked about. A pneumothorax is when you have air in the pleural space. It can resolve from all sorts of um, entities, like spontaneously from a rupture of a bleb, from lung disease like emphysema, from trauma. But with a tension pneumothorax, which is a surgical emergency, you need urgent needle decompression in a chest tube. So let's come back to this last question here. So 54 year old male presents with chest and flank pain with the following chest x-ray. So the chest x-ray reveals this, you know, moderate size pleural effusion. There's blunting of the cost of angle. So we know there's an effusion here. The pleural fluid was aspirated. And the key here is the pleural fluid protein, the serum protein ratio is 0.3. So that means it's less, according to light criteria, that's less than 0.5. So it must be a transitative effusion, an effusion that's from fluid overload state. So which of the following is a likely etiology? Well, it's going to be from congestive heart failure, nephrotic syndrome, or cirrhosis, because those are transitative effusions. And the only answer here is nephrotic. Lung cancer, pneumonia, trauma are going to, are going to be exudative effusions where that pleural fluid protein to serum protein ratio would have been greater than 0.5. So the answer here is nephrotic syndrome. Hope you like this. Please share this with everyone. Let this information go viral. And I'll see you next week for another high yield USMLE domination tutorial. Thank you so much for your time.